Good afternoon, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Tuesday, October the 11th, 2016. Let's take a look at what's happening with Nicole out here. Hurricane warning now in effect for Bermuda, less than 48 hours away that this will either make landfall over Bermuda and or very close, and then it'll move on out to sea fairly quickly. From there, you can see also a very large storm system over the subtropical Atlantic and then strong upper level winds cutting across the deep tropics here. Uh, this area down here closed for business for the time being. Our focus over the next couple of weeks after Nicole will be this area, and I will get to that as we progress here today. Close up colorized infrared showing deep convection trying to wrap around the center there, the eye, well on its way to becoming a hurricane again. And it wouldn't surprise me if this becomes a major hurricane, a Category 3, uh, because the water temperatures are warm enough and it's organizing fairly quickly now. The outflow is getting established and it's already forecast to be up to 100 miles per hour on its closest approach to Bermuda. That keeps getting nudged up slightly with each advisory as of late. So it won't shock me if this makes it a little stronger than that. We'll have to see if it does so before or after Bermuda. The latest track map, there's the red showing the hurricane warning for Bermuda. Uh, currently, it's looking like this could pass just to the west and north of Bermuda. So if Bermuda is represented by this little line here, and Nicole passes like this, for example, then it would put Bermuda in that right front quadrant, all right? And so that's problematic, as usually that's where the strongest winds are. Not always, but usually. So you folks in Bermuda, you better prepare... Uh, they are very good at that. I have been there a couple of times, once for a hurricane, and then I went back a few months later for some follow-up research, and it's amazing. And by the way, that hurricane was Gonzalo two years ago, almost to the day. So, man, Bermuda's definitely been a target, a small target, in a large ocean, and yet they've had all this activity. Uh, so, once again, they need to be getting ready, and we'll see. I've got to make a decision if I want to try to get out there myself to report on it or not um, I need to know if, you know pretty soon because <laughs> I'd have to get on a plane tomorrow so we'll uh, address that and see if I'm going to be going to Bermuda to cover this hurricane all right I'll keep you updated in the meantime it's still very much hurricane season and we are located about uh, in this area right in here if I can draw a straight line uh, so we've come off the main peak of the season and we're headed towards another one here, just shy. Uh, let me get in here with some yellow. Just shy of October 20th is sort of the secondary peak. Coming up at about the middle of the month, we'll say, all right? Around the 15th or 16th. And that's important because you see that uptick there again in activity before it drops off more substantially closer to November. That's because there is this sort of climatological um, increase overall in activity especially in the western caribbean during the next 10 days that we're entering right now so this is the past 100 years plus of development areas across the eastern pacific and the atlantic basin and you can clearly see that the majority the density of development areas is in the western caribbean that being said let's run through the gfs real quick i want to show you the 12z run this is the 850 millibar chart. We're going to notice a couple of things here. And uh, first of all, we're going to watch Bermuda right there. That's Bermuda. Okay, and I'll draw on it again when I animate this. And then we're going to notice what happens down here. This is not it, but watch what happens down here right towards the end of the run. This is out to five days. All right, so let's give it a start. And let's, again, pinpoint where Bermuda is, if I can find it. My eyes will work for me. Nicole moves on off to the north. There's Bermuda right there. Watch what happens. Comes really close, but passes just off to the north and west. The center does. And again, that would put Bermuda in that right front quadrant. So, uh, you know, watch out for that. The eye passing over you is actually a little bit better in most instances than staying in that right front quadrant the whole time. But then watch what happens right here near day five this area starts to get a little bit more interesting with vorticity showing up i'm gonna run the frames one more time again nicole coming up here towards bermuda right there is bermuda and looks like 
Thursday morning, there's sunrise, or just after sunrise, Thursday morning out in Bermuda, the closest approach by Nicole. Going to the very last frame, look at this. You can see day five, 120 hours out, large area of cyclonic flow at the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, energy starting to show up just a little bit. And you remember how much I used this chart for Matthew, and it didn't lead me astray at all. The GFS nailed it. Very, very, very accurate with the genesis of Matthew. Where it ended up, you know, that stuff's going to fluctuate. And we know that, especially when you're dealing with something that's going to come up and parallel the coast like Matthew did, you know, as opposed to a direct hit from the east. And you're talking about a small range of coastline. Well, we'll get into that another day. My point is the genesis, the formation of these systems I think the GFS does a really good job of sort of sniffing them out. If we look at the ensemble members, this is a graphic from Levi Cowan, tropicaltidbits.com, right there, you see. And so what does this show? This is sort of your entire suite of GFS members, the ensemble group, at 120 hours out, what do they all show? And so you get an average here, and you can say, okay, look, most of the members here, quite a few of them, pretty good density of development areas down here in the Western Caribbean. Another way to look at that, you can sort of ask the GFS operational, hey, what say you for development down here? And the GFS points to this and says, well, I'm going to start growing something in here around day five. And then you ask the rest of the ensemble group, I guess it's 19 other members, and the uh, operational makes 20. And those other members, many, many more of them suggest development by day five as well. So it's kind of like polling the rest of the ensemble members, if that makes sense, right? And you get a yay or a nay. And each of these little red areas indicates the pressure at that time frame and whether or not something's actually there, the center of a developed uh, area, for example, and the pressure field. Getting complicated here, I know, but once you get to day eight, I think it becomes pretty clear. The density, the lower the pressures here, uh, pretty good indication that many of the members here, maybe all of them, by eight days out, and so this would be the 19th of October, right in that window that I was showing you, a lot of the members, if not all of them, showing development in the Western Caribbean by day eight. So the GFS did extraordinarily well with sniffing out the development of Matthew, and so we need to watch the Western Caribbean uh, starting in about five days. All right, so one way to look at this, five days from now, if there's a mass of clouds starting to develop and the Hurricane Center has the area, quote, outlooked, as we call it, you know, their outlook for the next five days, um, and, you know, we'll know that before day five probably, then something's probably going to happen. So at least we can verify. And by the way, the rest of the model groups out there, the Euro, the Canadian, you know, several other models, um, the Japanese JMA, pretty much all of them show development down there. So there's a consensus from most of the global models that something will fire up beyond the day, uh, daytime, the daytime, the day five time frame. Yep, I'm still tired, still recovering from Matthew. My voice is getting weaker. It's all catching up to me. Doing well, though. I mean, I really am. I've been working on some time-lapse videos. I'll be posting those on the YouTube channel very shortly, showing the surge uh, coming into Charleston. And then in Merle's Inlet as well. That was pretty dramatic. Went from nothing to a couple feet of water. Uh, in just a matter of an hour or so, you'll see that. I'm going to post that to YouTube later today. All right, so I'm going to be talking with some colleagues and some other folks to determine whether or not I'm going to go to Bermuda to cover Hurricane, soon to be Hurricane Nicole. And I'll let you know about that too on social media. And then while I'm there, if I go, I would mostly be posting updates. I can't really take a lot of equipment and haul it over there on the airplane and try to set it up. It's much, much more difficult. So I would become much more of a hurricane chaser, doing reports, putting video up. Um, we'll see. All right, so stay tuned for that. Have a great rest of your afternoon, and as always, thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com, and I'll have more for you tomorrow one way or the other.